Hello my soccer universe, welcome to the Europa League and well my perfect week, uh, week, European week continues. Lusk winning, Milan winning, what more do I want now? I want the whole thing for the weekend as well. Double win and I would be really 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 happy for this week where my health is also on the upswing, fortunately. Um, it was, before we go to Lusk and you know as always I start in the conference league, telling you about the last game and then we'll go through the groups but uh to me beside that happy happenstance that last not only won but secured um first place in the group already um kind of meaning you're already in the last 16 of the new conference league which i think is a pretty achievement for a still small team i mean i would say lask is a top 10-ish team in austrian history because there are so many teams from Vienna that are not in the top league any anymore, but that still hold a lot of weight. But they are a top 10 team, but they're still a small team. This is a, quite an achievement, so I'm very, very happy with that. Um, but yeah, the other thing is that there were many occasions where uh, teams could have qualified or could have put themselves in a great, great position, but ended up losing and completely jeopardizing in the way their chances of actual uh, progression most notably of which is the only english team that did not record a win actually a shock loss of spurs at mura that was also in the conference league uh but there were also quite some interesting things in the europa league but we'll start in the conference league um lusk playing at Te tel aviv it was a true final Last going in there with a form that I think they had six um, games won away from home uh, in a row and they were about to make it seven. The f um, uh, rather contentiously, they of course played in their pink jerseys. The fan base will be not very happy with, with that. And I also thought if they play in all black there, uh, that, that, that would make more sense. But okay, yellow against pink, I think was not that bad of a matchup overall. But um, yeah, I, I would have preferred to see the black jerseys played there. But I know there's a contract uh, that they have to play in pink. <sighs> Go figure. In any case, uh, first half was actually Maccabi Tel Aviv much better. They surprised uh, Lusk because they have a new coach and uh, Lusk kind of made it very dense in the middle, but left the flanks wide open and Maccabi came left and right after, you know, the game was not a good one, but the, future, uh, the few chances that they had were actually quite, quite big. They even had a one-to-one -one with Goli Schlager at one point. And Lusk had really some trouble hanging on there, but on the other sense, they had a hand, they had also the one big chance where the Israeli goalkeeper uh, plays it out. It's intercepted by Horvath, who plays it immediately to Goig, 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 who just puts it dead wide. If he gets a little bit of curl on the ball, uh, that might go in, or if he one times it, to be honest, I think he has the ability, but for some reason he decided to, st uh, to stop it and then, you know, let the defenders in. If he won times it, I think he has a really, really good chance of pulling that one into net. So um, I would say rather lucky at the half a little bit. However, in the second half, uh, they shut up shop, totally shut up shop. And Maccabi did not really have a chance anymore. And from that point on, only Lask had a chance. A chance that completely took over the game. And in the end, it probably should have been more than just a one goal. Uh, going again with a great chance, then Nakamura with a nice shot. Um, you know, a little bit hidden the, the, the shot, but it was saved by uh, Perez, was the goalkeeper for uh, Maccabi. Um, and then also making the right changes and in, in, in the end it is Schmidt who I honestly I was not so happy with him. I thought he is, he is a good transfer but in many ways he was disappointing. Uh, but he gave, gives the assist to Horvath and then as Horvath and Gruber running free on goal and Horvath uh, he said after the Warburgs interview yeah I had enough confidence, confidence to make it myself and if he would have said it would have fall to Gruber and he makes the goal. So all fine. 1-0 in the 89th minute, they left it late, but the goal came and that means not that Lusk finishes for sure for our first because they owned the head-to-head -head over Maccabi. So if they should lose at home to Helsinki in the last round, uh, they are through. That goal was worth, I think they, they said 1.2 million euros uh, because not only do you get the... Um, uh, the money for the points but you also get double the price money for finishing first so a uh, pretty big step there and as i said for a small team who's just building a stadium all that money can be immediately put into the stadium i for my part 
am very, very, very pleased with that. Um, I was one of those that said, okay, maybe let's let the conference league go and really uh, focus on the championship. It might help. Well, I think I was wrong and I'm very happy and maybe things are look, looking at the up, but now it really counts. They need to win in Hartberg on Sunday. Okay, let's look at other games uh, that uh, were happening. Uh, group B was was the poster group where uh, Ghent and Partizan both could have easily uh, secured the passage to the next round and both managed to lose. Uh, the Especially Partizan losing to Flora seems to be an absolute uh, mind f you know what i mean it is actually keeps both flora uh, flora and um an anatosis anatosis i guess uh in the running for top spot where uh ghent is already through thanks to the other results so uh a really 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 weird group watching the stats cast i mean um partisan will have to play uh, the, next, the next game at home to Anatos and, and uh, a win will see them through. Uh, Roma, rather easy over Zoria, uh, Perez and Zaniolo um, make it 2-0 at the half, where two even misses a penalty, and Tammy Abram right after the half, a tap in and then a bicycle kick uh, to see it rather easy through for Roma, uh, meaning they are not in trouble of not qualifying anymore, but will they manage first place? That's the question, because Bode still winning, still a point ahead, and still owning the head-to-head -head, um, over Roma, so Roma most likely finishing in second, uh, need, needing to go through the playoff. Um, Jablonets and AZ play a 1-1 uh, result as AZ go through because Randers beat Cluj, giving them a shot, piecing an Austrian guy from Linz, play for Stuttgart, I have a Stuttgart jersey, uh, as you may know. Uh, he scores the winner with a free kick defender. I actually would love to see him at Lusk, to be honest. Uh, then let's go to uh, Group E, where Slavia and Feyenoord play, uh, play out a 2-2. Uh, Feyenoord twice coming from behind. Uh, both goals by Dessers, the last one in stoppage time. They also find themselves down at 36. It was a red card for Till with for a rather clumsy, uh, bordering nasty challenge. I mean, it was not on purpose but uh it was it, it, it was dangerous what i was surprised is when Dessa scores is the equalizer how many favorite fans were there in prague i mean that whole uh, they, they were all celebrating they were playing in prague that didn't make much sense to me but yeah uh that win uh, i mean fan i think was already very re re through but now slavia has um has uh, a little bit the upper hand. Union keep themselves in play with a bit lucky win at Haifa. Uh, it is a direct shoot at Union against Slavia Prague uh, for the last spot there. Um, we have to go through Group F. Copenhagen gets the win at the Lincoln Red, Red Imps and Slovan and Pauk play out a nil-nil since away goals don't count any, any, any anymore. Now it's a direct shoot, shoot, shootout. Whoever wins the next game and then goal difference will decide it. Pauk plays at home to the, uh, to, to, to the Red Imps. They better do something to boost their goal difference there. Slovan has to play um, against uh, Copenhagen away from home so uh the board is kind of tilted towards Pauk. i would be very very happy to see Pauk go through um as i said the shocker of the off this is mura beating spurs i mean they took an early early spurs could equalize uh but they were already down in the 30 second uh through a second red card for assessing you know, really stupid uh challenge uh, but they get in uh and you know um harry kane gets the equalizer in the 72nd the equalizer probably would have been enough but then they are pushing forward it is intercepted and um the uh Chipot plays it to marosa and the uh, ball is deflected by davinson sanchez into the net and a shock absolute shock loss uh from spurs to mura which really puts them in some trouble because vitesse manages a late draw at uh, ren Ren having already a comfortable 2-0 and 3-1 uh, lead and they are uh, scoring in the last few minutes, which means that uh, Vitesse and Spurs are level. Vitesse has to play at home to Mura and uh, Spurs are hosting Ren. 
Rena already through, so maybe that it still points towards Spurs a little bit, but at the moment the model favors actually Vitesse a little bit more because they have the easier game. So uh, that's a, quite a big one, a, quite a big development. And I would not be amiss, I mean, in Group H, uh, Basel come twice uh, back from being a goal down to Kairat and then score for a winner. But it's Karabakh, uh, who could have, we, 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 with a win, put them in a good position because they have to go to Basel and then a draw will, would have been enough. Uh, it looked good. They um, turn, uh, they turned a, a halftime deficit around uh, with a, a two-one in the 88th through Andrade uh, after Kiko had been sent off with a second yellow. Also, one of those tackles. Yeah, why are you doing that? Um, however, then the goal of the evening came. Uh, seemingly a counter attack. And uh, Gomez sees that the Karabakh goalkeeper a little bit out of, out of his goal. And from just behind the halfway line, he scores an uh, absolute worldy. The goalie even tri uh, tripping over to make it a little bit more slapstick. Great, great, great goal, one has to say. Moving over to the Europa League, we have, uh, let's start again group a group, group, although we have already a rather remarkable result up uh, there. Lyon, 1-0 down against Brøndby, but Ryan Cherky scores a brace thereafter and they run away 3-1 winners. Uh, Rangers also getting a big win, 2-0 uh, over Sparta, which also see them through to the next round. So uh, that group is already side Sparta going down into the uh, playoffs for the Conference League. Um, so that's the, ah uh, yeah, and the uh, second goal by Rangers. By, by, by Morelos, I mean there was really the uh, the Sparta defender wanted to play it over to his uh, teammate across the goal mouth. <laughs> Morelos just as I said, thank you, bang, <laughs> slapstick goal. So speaking of slapstick goal, that definitely was one. So. Uh, Monaco against Real Sociedad was a rather entertaining affair. I mean, it took a little bit to go and then uh, a rather messy goal by Volland really got the game uh, ignited. Isaac with a very, after a very fine assist by Jan Janusai with a nice, nice chip uh, puts, uh, makes it 1-1, but more, more from the uh, corner then ensued after kick, kick, kick off uh, for Fana. Heads it in and then the game really got back and forth. Uh, Real Sociedad trying to score. The one thing is Rasuda barely can score more than one goal at this moment, which I find uh, rather uh, curious for a team that is so high up in the league. Fofana is sent off very, very, very late for a rather rough tackle, but Rasuda cannot find a winner and a little bit in trouble because PSV have absolutely, absolutely no problem with Sturmgaards. Also behind closed doors, lots of fireworks behind there. Uh, what, what can I can say, I mean, uh, the, the panel, I mean, the uselessness of Sturm Graz going forward. I mean, they got the game settled, uh, but going forward, there were two card contacts. One, where they actually can really, really nicely play, and then uh, you have even two men in, in the box, and Jancic just needs to cross it in, and he plays it back to another, uh, to a PSV player. Uh, and then... The first goal came from a penalty situation where it's pretty clear the goalie needs to get to it. Uh, they mess this up. The whole thing becomes a mess. They mishandle the ball. Suddenly Goethe has the ball and the goalie comes and checks down Goethe. Clear penalty. Vinicius steps up, although uh, Siebenhandel was there. Um, and then after they have Bruma, I mean, they scored, I, I think, even another one. Um, but it was every bit of 2 0 that was was your um, um, other favorites. There was one chance where Sturm could, 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 could have attacked, and you see three players moving forward, but completely forgetting that someone needs to go to the ball that has been played. This was so absolute ridiculous. <laughs> the ball played, they were, the three go all in position. Well, there should have been a fourth one to take the ball, and one of them has to move towards the ball. If I was a Sturm fan, fortunately I'm not, I would be really, really, really annoyed. Well, I shouldn't say first, for, 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 because Sturm at the moment is doing better in the league. Group C, uh, that is another one that, when you saw the draw, you thought, yeah, Leicester and Napoli are going to go through. Most likely, one of those, uh, very likely, one of those will not. Uh, it's <laughs> because they play each other the last match day. Uh, and I think there's no, because Napoli losing, losing to Spartak Moscow, to do some uh, goals in the first half. 
only animals can pull, pull, pull back. So Spartak uh, owns the head, uh, owns the head to head over Napoli. So it should they finish in level 11 points, Napoli can can win him here. So Napoli needs to win against Leicester. And then Spartak uh, against Legia. So it's 8, 7, 7, 6. No, Leicester or Napoli. It's a direct shoot, 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 shoot in the last round. But you might win the group if you do so. So it's a really, really, really open. Leicester getting the 3 1. Uh, but the one thing over the Napoli game is, of course, uh, Spalletti making a huge thing. The Sparta coach didn't want to shake his hand before the game. And then Spalletti decided, no, I'm not going to shake your hand after the game. You love a good coaching rivalry. But that group is really, really open. Uh, which we cannot say for Group D, where Frankfurt just misses of winning the group. Um, they took an early through through Kamada Nainggolan with a doubly deflected shot equalizes and then actually Adver uh, had scored a goal uh, through the luck that that, that led that was actually such a fractional offside that yeah I was a little a little surprised. Then Frankfurt is actually pushing forward to get get, get the winner caught on the counter to get Samata is scoring. There was also a huge pyro display by the um, Antwerp fans before the uh, uh, you know in the second half. Absolutely lit, lit, lit up the section there. And then even uh, a cracker behind the hand exploded and you could, could, could see how this disturbed the player. So there UEFA will definitely do some, some, some thing. But Samata gets the lead. You think Adverb is through and they have actually a fighting chance. But then Paciencia gets an equalizer. A result that doesn't really help any, anyone because Olympiakos gets a late win. So Olympiakos and Eintracht are through. Eintracht have to go to Fenerbahce where they need a point as they own uh, the tiebreaker over Olympiakos and Olympiakos have to go to Antwerp. So um, not that straightforward either. Um, then let's go to Group E, uh, a rather appealing group, but uh, more, more or less every, every, everything's over because Galatasaray uh, win 4-2 over Marseille. Amazing atmosphere. Um, was rather easy, must say, only having had. I mean, it was a little bit unlucky that the second goal uh, was, uh, was 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 deflected one by Chaleta Sar, so an on, on, on goal. But then uh, Galatasaray really um, hit them on the counter and took Marseille apart. Milik scores two, but it's only to three one and four two. So uh, uh, Galatasaray through Lazio two immobile pen penalty. See them through it. Lock Moscow the second one probably a little bit um, so 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 and so. But so uh, Lazio is also through, and if they win against Galatasaray, um, you know the head to head. I think it was a one nil win for Galatasaray in the first. So uh, if they win uh, that one. They also finished top of the group uh, in there. Uh, Braga come back twice uh, against Midtjylland, but Midtjylland gets a late win, which uh, puts Midtjylland in an uh, intriguing position. Uh, Braga is not only second and the Red Star Belgrade beat uh, Rasgrad 1-0, but um, all that means now is that Braga plays against Javenas Vesta, so that seems to be crucial, especially if Midtjylland wins at Ludo Goret. So that could be interesting. Uh, Celtic gave themselves a chance by uh, turning around the halftime, um, uh, a lead by Andrich, Juranovic and Jota. However, Leverkusen can't come, come, come back to win it, have secured first space, uh, and Betis with a 2-0 win over Ferenc Varos do likewise. And then the Rapid group, Rapid absolutely, I mean, no fans, uh, nothing, it was a bad performance, Yamolenko and no Noble with a penalty just, just before the half, there was no chance for Rapid, uh, and in the other game, uh, Genk probably should, should have won, I mean, Zagreb take, takes it, but Genk uh, had a few ch chances to actually get, get more. They uh, didn't, and it ends 1-1, one, one, which basically means Zagreb is still in a better position. Uh, Rapid have a chance to actually, with an away win to Genk, to um, make it into the Conference League. However, it's more likely that Genk will beat them and, Zag and maybe have that even a chance to overtake Zagreb. So, there you go. This was it all from uh, Europa League and Europa Conference League. Please let, let me know what you thought about the games yesterday, which games you watched. Um, or if you find both how you think about both competitions I love them both too, too, to be honest uh, it's rather entertaining on Thursdays give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel and we'll see you more talk to you soon bye
Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!